Today we will hear a story about a woman from the ancient Israel named Hannah, and we will learn from how she prayed to God. We are continuing with our theme about prayer. Now this story is recorded in the Old Testament book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 19a. There was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, and an Ephrathite. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Next slide. So Elkanah was from a place called Ramathiam, also called Rama for short. We know Elkanah was most likely wealthy because he had two wives, Hannah and Penina. It was common to have more than one wife at the time. So starting verse three, now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. So you can see Ramah down here and they had to travel to Shiloh. And this is the Mediterranean Sea. This is kind of where Jerusalem is. Um, so it's, it's about a 14 mile trip, but he takes his whole family. This is Eli and his sons. So every year Elkanah and his entire family go to the tabernacle at Shiloh to pray, worship and offer sacrifices to God. So the tabernacle is the only place of worship for the Israelites, but they are only allowed into the courtyard. Only priests can go into the tabernacle regularly to offer rituals and sacrifice for the people. And only one time a year, the high priest, Eli, representing the people, goes before God and offers sacrifices for all their sins. Because Jesus had not come yet, and sinful people cannot direct interact directly with a holy God. The high priest stands in the gap asking God to forgive the sins of the nation. So if you look at the second picture, this is kind of like a cutout of the inside of the tabernacle. The entrance is here, which is kind of like right here. And this is the place where the, the priest typically sacrificed. And this is the area that the high priest can only go into once a year. And this represents the presence of God. And this is the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, on the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. When Elkanah, after the sacrifice, Elkanah gets a big portion of the sacrifice back. And then he divides it and gives a portion to Penina and to each of her sons and daughters. But for Hannah, he gave a double portion. He gave extra because he loved her, even though God did not give her children. Verse six, and her rival used to provoke her, Hannah, grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. Every year when they visited the tabernacle, Penina taunted. Hannah for not having children and made her feel bad. Why would she do that? Well, Penina might have been angry and jealous of Hannah because Elkanah, the husband, loved Hannah more, even though she had no children and Penina had several. And this particular year, Hannah got so upset, she lost her appetite and couldn't eat her food. I can imagine Penina being happy that she made Hannah so upset that she couldn't eat. Verse eight, and Elkanah, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than 10 sons? Elkanah didn't seem to understand Hannah's pain. Hannah felt shame, guilt, and worthlessness because she couldn't give an heir to her husband. Besides, Penina, the other wife, constantly taunted her and rubs her pain in her face. Hannah felt no one can relate to her. 
she must have felt alone and isolated, even though she was surrounded by family members. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like no one understands the challenges you're going through? Maybe it's a difficult relationship, or maybe it's a medical condition. Maybe people are judging you for your actions or your choices. No one seemed to understand you. And that's how Hannah must have felt at the time. After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. Hannah waited until after everyone finished eating, and then she went to the tabernacle to pray. That must have been a bold move because it must have been unusual for a woman to go to the tabernacle alone. She prayed and wept at the tabernacle entrance where Eli was sitting. Verse 11, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look at the affliction of your servant, look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. Hannah made a vow to God. She said to God that if he will give her a son, she will give him back to serve God for the rest of his life. She asked God to see her, to recognize the suffering she is going through. Hannah wanted to be relieved from the humiliation and suspicion of not being able to have children, even if that meant she cannot raise the child herself. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunken woman, and Eli said to her, how long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine, put your wine away from you. Verse 12 says, Hannah was praying before the Lord and speaking in her heart. Praying before the Lord means she was praying in God's presence, worshiping God. This is more intimate than just praying to God. She was pouring out her heart to God. And Eli, who was sitting by the door watching Hannah as she prayed silently, he sees her mouth moving and she's weeping bitterly but he doesn't hear her voice. The Bible doesn't tell us why, but he assumes she's drunk and scolds her for being drunk. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. But Hannah respectfully corrects Eli and then clarifies that she was not drunk, but instead had been pouring out her soul before the Lord. She asks Eli not to think she was doing anything immoral or evil because she was praying out of her great anxiety and frustration. Then Eli answered, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Eli acknowledges his error right away. He blesses Hannah and prays her request be granted. Then Hannah left, ate, and she was no longer sad. A Bible teacher from a website, TorahClass.com, Tom Bradford, explains it this way, and I'm paraphrasing. Hannah was honest in telling God what was in her heart, and it brought her peace and comfort. It was not because she was sure God will give her children. It was because she drew close to God by being humble and sincere, and that brought her, quote, the peace that passes understanding, end quote, only God can give. When we pray sincerely, the situation may not change, but somehow God assures us that he hears us, is with us, loves us, and whatever happens, it will be okay. Hannah felt so much better that she got her appetite back. So in summary, what did we learn from this story? We learned that we can go to God in prayer through Jesus, our high priest. 
It's our privilege to go before God directly in prayer. It's only through Jesus, our high priest, that we are able to do that. Nowadays, a lot of us go to church on Sundays to worship God, but we can also worship God on Monday, Tuesday, any day, and at any place we want. It could be early in the morning, in the middle of the night. You can be on land, in, at sea, in the air, underground, even in space. God is always accessible to us. And what changed between ancient Israel and now was because of Jesus. When Jesus, God's son, came into the world as a baby, he became the high priest for everyone when he grew up and died on the cross for man's sin. His sacrifice allowed anyone who accepts Jesus as their savior to go directly before God. It's through Jesus, our high priest, that we are able to go before God in prayer and worship at any time and any place. We don't have to wait for certain festivals before we hop into a car and take a trip to the tabernacle to worship God, to sacrifice to God. Nor do we need someone like Eli to be our high priest. Jesus is our high priest who intercedes for us before the Father. The Bible tells us we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. And we often take our access to God for granted because it's so easy and convenient. It's not something we need to plan for like Elkanah's family had to do. But Jesus went through tremendous hardship and paid a heavy, heavy price. We should be grateful and thank Jesus every day. The second point is we can always pour out our heart to God in prayer. Hannah could not have children and it was beyond her control. Some of us might find ourselves in circumstances that are beyond our control, causing us to feel helpless. But we are not helpless or hopeless. We can always go before God in prayer. Like Hannah, when you pray, you can pour out your heart to God and ask him to take away your burden. You can tell God what's inside your heart, your deepest pain, sorrows, worries, even doubts. You might say, dear Heavenly Father, sometimes I am afraid to make changes because I don't know what will happen. Will you please help me to be brave? Or if you feel weary and tired of a sickness you've had for a long time, you can pray something like, God, I'm tired. Will you please give me strength and help me feel better? There's nothing you can tell God that he doesn't already know. And there's nothing you can say that can cause him to love you less. Third point, when we pray, God gives us peace that, passes under, that surpasses all understanding. When you truly surrender and give it all to God by telling him everything that is in your heart, you will receive God's peace and assurance that it will be okay, no matter what the outcome is. Well, what is that like? What does that feel like? It's like being in a difficult situation and you feel like you should be more worried, but you're not. It's like your heart is not heavy anymore, even though the situation is the same. It's like you have peace and joy and you can smile in the difficult situation. And I remember feeling that way years ago when my brother needed surgery. And again, when my father got sick, God will not leave nor forsake you. He remains right by your side through it all. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So whenever you feel sad, afraid, worried, or even angry about the situation you are in, pray to God right away. Empty what is in your heart to him and believe that God will give you his best. Amen.